Welcome to sunny Derrimore Park in uh, the Malone Road in mm. Belfast for this afternoon's EYHL Division 1 game between Belfast Harlequins and UCD. Not quite a top of the table clash, more top v bottom as uh, UCD are going for the title. Two points behind Loretto before the start of play today uh, and they are 2-1 up in their vital game against Railway Union who are in seventh place. And it'll be interesting to see how that game finishes. It's still ongoing. Loretto 2, Railway Union 1, which would mean that Loretto would go five points clear with one game to go. And of course, UCD would have to win today to stay in the title race. That's all ahead of us. With me, I have uh, Jenny McDonough today. Uh, but you're here obviously to give us the lowdown on these two teams. Um, it's great to see you covering the hockey um, this afternoon. So we've got a really exciting match today, um, scoreline. So um, that day it was a real masterclass in hockey. UCD just seemed to come at half time. Managed to come back and get the draw, which is probably less than they would have hoped for. And today they're going to be very determined, I would imagine. Would you expect to see UCD dominate the early exchanges? I would absolutely expect that. I mean, it's always hard to travel away from home. Um, it's always hard to come up against a, a team in their own home turf. But I would expect after Thursday, they will be rattled from that game. They know it's all to play to. So I would look forward to seeing them coming out all guns blazing. But Harlequins will be ready to go as well. OK, let me go through the teams for you. And uh, first of all, Belfast Harlequins, who have Suzanne Parks in goal, number one. Number four, Lindsay Hamilton. This is what we think the formation will be. Lindsay Hamilton at right back, number four. Number two will be Olivia Beatty and uh, Imogene Graham, number three, playing at centre back. And number six, Catherine Welchman at left back. In the middle, Jodie Key on the right, number 14. Katie Larmer, number 15 in the centre, and Sophie Hunter, the captain, playing on the left side of midfield. Up front then, we think it'll be Jiwon Hong, number seven, on the right. Char Char Claire Whiteside in the middle, number nine, and Claire Bannerman on the left. But of course, things change as the games go on, and they have, of course, got five players on the bench. And as for UCD, well, following their draw on Thursday, they have only brought 14 players up to Belfast today. They'll start with Nora McGinty in goal. Sophia Cole, uh, KJ Marshall, Sarah McCauley and Lucy Crow will be the back four. Ali Griffin, Hannah McLaughlin, the captain, and Eva Lavelle in the middle. And they'll have Grace Keane, Leah O'Shea and Neve Carey, the Ireland international, up front. And of course, UCD missing uh, Neve's sister. Uh, who was sadly injured in training with the Ireland team uh, on, thir on Monday last. Uh, she broke her jaw, uh, which is a really bad injury and has put her out for the season. So that's a big loss for them. And they've also got a, a couple of people who are unavailable. But uh, it's still a very strong team, a very young team, this UCD side. Yeah, sure. They're young, they're fit, they link up well together. When I played against them last, they attacked in numbers. So I expect to see them really getting up and down that pitch very, very fast. And lots of exciting hockey here. We're just about to get underway. There's the whistle. Mike Campbell and Gareth Heron are the umpires today. And it's uh, Belfast Harlequins playing from left to right in the first half in this glorious spring sunshine here in Belfast. Great day for hockey. Pitch though, not too much watering before the match. Do you think it might be a little bit dry? Um, I don't think so. I mean, there's plenty of rain in Belfast the last few days anyway. So we're very lucky the sun's shining, but the surface looks like it's playing well so far. UCD trying to get it through the centre quickly, but uh, Belfast Harlequins give up possession. And now it's UCD on the attack. Yes, yeah, so I think Harlequins today really need to watch their turnovers. That's where the danger comes. UCD will be very fast in the attack if we turn over the ball. So we just need to watch that. Just kept in by Claire Whiteside after receiving the pass from uh, Jiwon Hong. Yes, yeah, so Claire Whiteside has been a great addition to our squad this year. She joined from Queen's and she's a very quick forward, definitely one to watch. Whistle goes, not quite sure what that was for, but it's going to be a free hit, I think, to Harlequins. The league table before the start of play today showed Loretto on 32 points, UCD on 30, both having played 16 matches, just two games to go. Catholic Institute on 29, Old Alex on 28. Uh, it'll be tight at the top and of course not just the league championship but all those European playoff places as well to play for. Now here come UCD on the attack into the circle for the first time and uh, 
it's going to be a hit out here for Belfast Harlequins. Yeah, so UCD look like they're sitting back and giving the Harlequins back for a bit of space to work in there. And then they were able to ta attack on the break. So Harlequins just need to watch that break and make sure they get players back. But they're closing in here. Cut out by UCD. Nice play there by uh, Ali Griffin. And gets the return pass. Can she get the cross in? Harlequins defence standing firm. They're playing quite deep, Belfast Harlequins, in these opening minutes. Yeah, I think they have to. They're being forced back a little bit, unfortunately, but we just need to make sure that we keep UCD out of the circle because they are lethal when they get in there. G1 Hong's pass goes astray. UCD with possession again. Oh, lovely stick work. And into the circle they go, but uh, out and behind for a hit out for Harlequins. Yeah, we've got the head out here, so Harlequins will be setting up and they need to try and find the gaps. There's a little bit of space there between the two centre-backs, so hopefully they'll be able to start constructing some passes together. Both sides giving possession away quite cheaply in these opening minutes. 17 and a half minutes per quarter, four quarters in a, a game of hockey, as you probably all know. Those of you watching from around the country with an interest in the... the destination of the EY Hockey League of 2023. Belfast Harlequins who have yet to win a game this season. A result for them would be a great achievement against a side as good as the students. Yeah, look, I mean, at Harlequins this year, we've had, um, a, we've had a, a turbulent year where we have a lot of young players. We have a lot of skilled kids there, so we've just been learning every week. So I think they'll be looking to contain here just Every quarter that goes without UCD scoring is really a win here. Three of the starting 11 for Harlequins today. Still school girls, Olivia Beatty, Imogene Graham and uh, Jiwon Hong. Hong. up front as well, yeah. So a very young, a young core to the team, but uh, no different from UCD, whose entire squad is aged between 18 and 23, all, of course, in university, bar one, who is... Uh, Back on a year of grace, that's Charlotte Cope, who is on the sub bench today. So UCT trying to build it slowly from the back. Nice crossfield ball, that. Well cut out by the right back, Sophia Cole. Yeah, so Harlequins need to try and just defend outside their circle here. You see they are really coming up the attacking circle with a lot of pace. It's been a great start from both sides, actually. Everybody looks like they're ready to go in this game. Grace Keane playing on the left side of attack for UCD, having switched over from the right. Now it's Belfast Harlequins. What can they put together here? They need to get their passing game going. It's good work by Claire Bannerman there, and she gets the pass. Good attack here, good options for Harlequins, but it's cut out. On the edge of the circle by UCD. Harlequins pushing forward. Plenty of players in attack here. That was Jody Key who gets the uh, free. Trying to get into the circle, but there's just no space there. Yeah, I think she was trying to get around the back to win a corner there, but the UCD girls defended that really well. I mean, Harlequins have some really speedy forwards, as we've seen, so if they can actually get the ball up front, there are some opportunities for goals from the Harlequins side here as well. So, UCD pushing it forward into the uh, 25. Circle entry here. Shot comes in, wide of the target. Suzanne Parks watched that all the way. Yeah, that's a great shot. It's a wide angle, though, so that's always difficult to score from there. But UCD are getting closer and closer, aren't they? They've had a few circle entries here. So um, Harlequins just need to try and get those tackles in outside the circle. That was Hannah McLaughlin with the shot just wide of the target. And again, Belfast Harlequins give possession up inside their own half. Perfect conditions for hockey, isn't it? Yeah, it's lovely. Um, Saturday afternoon, isn't it? It's nice. It feels like winter's over and we're under the nice sunshine. So, You probably wish you were out there yourself. <laughs> it's um, Yeah, it's not easy to watch. I'd definitely much rather be playing, but it's great to be here anyway. Imogen Graham moving inside. 
just losing out a lot of UCD players there but uh, the whistle goes it's going to be a free hit to the students they'll be anxious to make a strong start here yes. after going behind in midweek in that vital game against Pembroke Wanderers had they won that game, of course, the league would be all tied up with two games to go, which would be very exciting as we enter the final stages. Of course, there's more than just the league championship at stake these last two weeks. There's also the top six places and those playoffs that will happen later next, in next month, uh, playoffs for European places. Champions not always guaranteed of getting the uh, Champions League place, it just depends on those playoffs. Yeah. Where first and second get a bye into the semi-finals and places three to six play off in semi-finals. That's right, it's not straightforward is it? But it makes it really exciting for um, the people who get to see those playoffs and it, it's a good business end of the season and lots of exciting hockey still to come at this stage. But the title is what is the big prize. It's the one that's won over 18 matches from September right through to April. League due to be wrapped up next weekend on the 1st of April. Yeah, I mean the EYHL leagues are at such tight margins, you know, every game is difficult so the title is, is really the big, big aim and UCD will be hoping they get a good result here to keep them in contention. The pale blue numbers on the white shirts on a bright sunny day, very difficult to pick out the UCD players, uh, but uh, we'll do our best. That's it. So UCD are closing down in the pockets. You can see that Harlequins, they're really aiming to get them to play the balls out wide and then they're closing in numbers to try and turn the ball over. And then UCD are really attacking in numbers. You can see when they turn it over, they get a lot of players forward. So they're really going for this today. I was speaking to uh, their coach, Miles Warren, yesterday, and he, he was telling me that they have a very um, sort of old-style Dutch total hockey attitude yeah. towards the way they play. They like to get lots of players forward when they're mm -hmm. attacking, and uh, their fitness get, allows them to get back in defence too. Here's a great chance. A chance. Belfast Harlequins right in front of goal, but that chance gets away from number 11. That's Susie McCollum. Yes, Susie McCollum will have, will have just come on, so it's not necessarily easy to um, pick up those balls, but that was a great chance for Belfast Harlequins, and now we've had a bit of another turnover, so they just need to be careful as with numbers getting into the circle here. Oh, UCD. great chance here for UCD to take the lead, and the shot towards the goal, somehow managing to just miss the target. There we go, yes. Yeah, Did it touch the defender? The keeper might have got a bit of a touch on that but actually she had a few players coming in behind her there you could see two other players coming into the circle so but they're getting closer and closer here and they're definitely as you were saying about the the Dutch style they're getting a lot of numbers forward so um, Harlequins are doing well here to keep things out and there have been a couple of chances at the other end so you just never know what's gonna happen here super stick and work there, there by Imogene like Graham Bannerman, who's gonna put the ball across Crossfield pass cut out by the UCD defence. And now a lot of space for them to attack into. This is the captain, Hannah McLaughlin, playing on the right hand side, but she has uh, lost possession. That's lovely play from Kitty Larmer, and then nice connection when Harlequins pass the ball here. They're looking, looking good and they're getting forward. Really nice play by Belfast Harlequins. UCD. Managing to get plenty back though, the uh, attack quite slow in the build-up. So we've had a change in personnel from Harlequins. Some of their forwards have come on. I think Sasha has come on up front. That's Sasha Logan, Sasha, number 12. Sasha Logan, again, another skill girl. And we've had Susie McCollum come on as well. So Harlequins have a full squad here today and they will change those forwards quite regularly to make sure they're doing the hard work to try and contain, contain UCD. Great pass. That's a great ball forward. Sent forward quickly. UCD looking dangerous here. Ah, that's fine defending though by uh, 
Lindsay that. Hamilton. Yeah, that's Lindsay. She's been at Harlequins for quite a few years and she's she's reliable there, picking up those balls coming through. So UCD were trying to use a little lift there in the circle, which is quite effective, but Lindsay watched the ball and was able to pick it up. So that's a good interception. UCD striding forward. Now that's great play by the defence. Harlequins yes, on the counter here. Jody Key doing well to keep possession. Under pressure from... Yeah, she'll get a free hit there. Jody Key's getting quite a lot of space in the right midfield here, so it's great to see the attack up the right. It's been a good performance so far by Belfast Harlequins. And not overawed at all. Only two points this season from their 15 games. Both draws here at home against Pegasus and Monkstown. Yeah, it's been a tough season. As I say. We've had a few um, people injured, a few pregnancies and things, but the girls are doing really, really well. That was another good pull in. I mean, any team could have scored a goal here, really, you know. So um, hopefully it remains this exciting as we go along. Well, we're coming towards the end of the first quarter. Four minutes and 50 seconds to go. And Belfast Harlequin showing that this is not going to be a cakewalk for the side chasing the title today. That's more good work. And but UCD closed the door and away they come. And that was our left back attacking, so we need to get back now. Um, UCD are just picking those balls up and then attacking. Look at the number of players here going forward when they pick those balls up. So they're really dangerous in that um, turnover scenario. That was Ali Griffin who was uh, bursting clear for UCD. Sent forward, chance maybe here for UCD. Oh, lovely play. McLaughlin trying to keep uh, the defenders at bay, but there's so many Belfast Harlequins players back and eventually they get the turnover. Gosh, how many UCD players were in the circle there? They had about six players in the circle, so Harlequins did well not to give away a corner or anything else in that scenario. So they're, they're you know, if we can get through this quarter without conceding a goal, then that'll be a, a real positive for them. Belfast Harlequins, who've only scored 11 goals this season, conceded 64. So a goalless quarter against UCD would be a feather in their cap. Just take it one quarter at a time and you never know. Absolutely. And with these breaks, you just don't know what, what could come on the other end. But you see they're attacking again. There's Lindsay intercepting the ball well from the back. Again, Jody Key play. down this right-hand side. There's a lot of space for Harlequins when they're getting the ball moved up there nice and early. There's some really good constructive hockey happening. I was out off the uh, stick of Quiva Burn, and it's a sideline hit now for Harlequins. And that's gone behind. So that's gone behind from, for a long corner. So again, Harlequins have another opportunity here. But you see they are defending in numbers as well. So look at how many people they have back. They're really attacking and defending with the whole team. Very fit side, as you can imagine. Students hockey, students football, student rugby, they're all very, very fit teams. Well, they have age on their side they as well, sure do. don't they? The so. entire team aged just between uh, 18 and 23. Driven towards the circle, but cut out by UCD. So again, they're attacking in numbers and Harlequins are really just trying to get back to make sure nothing goes through here. That's Sarah McCauley, I think, down the right. And a cross just eludes the stick in the centre. That was so close. Yeah, look, this was great positioning at the back. The run from the left forward, she just took a little step back from her defender and was able to get into the position to deflect that. Very, very unfortunate there from UCD. That was a great bit of play. And here we've got another. She's going to go here for they the come again, stick. Just inside the circle and lifting it over the bar. But uh, yeah, UCD with a couple of great chances there in the last minute. It's very, very difficult to defend when somebody can just spin like that and pull up a reverse stick shot. So we were um, probably quite relieved to see that go over the bar. Just under a minute and a half left now in this first quarter. I'm sure coach Phil Mills will be uh, happy with what he's seen so far from his team. Yeah, look, Harlequins are defending well and they've had some chances here. So um, this hasn't been a bad quarter. 
and I'm sure UCD will, as the game goes on, just be anxious to get that first goal and break the de that deadlock. Harlequin sitting quite deep here, just um, trying to block all of those gaps through for UCD, but they've got it up and forward again. Final minute of the first quarter, can they make a breakthrough? Again, it's great defending and uh, the stick there was pulled. It's going to be a free hit to the home side. It's just so important to protect your feet there, not to give away corners because UCD will have a great corner, short corner routine, I'm sure. So that was, again, good defending by Belfast Harlequins. And that went all the way down to the other end. So an opportunity for Belfast Harlequins maybe to push out a little and get to the end of the first quarter. I think with, on 20, level terms. with 20 seconds to go, sometimes you're relieved just to see that ball go off the back line to buy a bit of breathing space and potentially not enough time for UCD to get that final attack in. So the final seconds of what's been an entertaining first quarter without too many opportunities. UCD probably with the best of them, but it is scoreless at the break and a great performance by this plucky Belfast Harlequin side in holding UCD at bay. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, the one thing I would say about Belfast Harlequins this year is there's a great team spirit. And as much as they've only had two points this season, they've come out week on week and been really determined. So it's been a fantastic showing in the first quarter. UCD are throwing everything at this game, but um, great to see. Really exciting first quarter and look forward to seeing hopefully some goals coming from um, potentially both sides as we move forward. Welcome back to Derrimore Park for this uh, EYHL Division 1 clash. Belfast Harlequins holding UCD in the first quarter. And uh, latest score we have from Loretta Hockey Club in Rathfarnham at half time. It's 2-1. 2-1 to Loretta, which would give them a five-point cushion, having played a game more than UCD. So absolutely essential for UCD to win today to keep their title hopes alive. Next week, UCD are away to Pegasus, while Loretto are away also against Pembroke Wanderers. And Pembroke Wanderers currently in fifth place, but it's a really tight contest as well for that fifth, sixth, and seventh, with uh, Pembroke Wanderers currently on 23, Pegasus on 23, and Railway just two points behind. Of course, if Railway lose today, then that could be 
It's the end of their hopes of making the top six. There we go. So we have our first short corner of the game. So we're about to see what UCD have in their penalty corner armory. We had some really, really um, good forward play around the back there on the reverse stick and then a nice ball in. So we'll have a look at the um, UCD penalty corner attack here. Well, we've just heard that the final score from Loretto is 2-1. So they have got the three points. They've pushed up to 35 points, five points ahead of UCD who, of course, have this game in hand. But uh, it could all go down to the last day if UCD can get the win. And here is the first penalty stroke, penalty corner of the game. Nicely set up. And the shot goes just wide. Just wide. So I think they were actually looking for a deflection there. You can see the person coming in the left-hand side with the reverse stick out. So they were actually looking, I think, to deflect that ball into the corner. And it was on, but she just didn't quite get that touch. So um, it was a good pace penalty corner but I'm sure Belfast Hurricanes will be a relief to have defended that well and still have the score remain nil all today so again look we've got some UCB players getting very free in that circle there's so many of them up there it's really um you know it feels like something's coming so sometimes you can have too many players in the circle all getting in each other's way but uh, we'll see what UCD can do this time Ball bounces up off a stick and it's gone behind. Great, Harlequins will be um, just going to set, set up and take a little bit of time, just reconvene. It's been a good start to this quarter by UCD, so they'll just get themselves set and try and get this ball a few constructive passes and get it out up from the back. So we've got Olivia over the ball there. So Olivia Beattie, she's one of our school girls as well, and a very strong player at the back. So. And you can see when those balls go into those wide areas, there are just multiple UCD players ready to come in and point and try and win it back. So they're really um, going for it here. Yeah, UCD looking yes. for the chance here. Goalkeeper is out and just manages to get the block in. Suzanne Parks preventing that shot from heading towards goal. Yeah, so that was really lovely skill on display here. But um, Susie in the goal here, uh, I mean, she's had a... She's had quite a bit of work to do this season, but she really um, is doing very well, keeping the ball out. That through ball all the way behind. So uh, a bit of a relief here for Harlequins, who will be anxious to just get a few short passes together, keep some possession. You can see how they're being pressed in by uh, the UCD tactics. A very tight press. And that's Catherine Welshman has managed to break out from the left. So what they want to do there is try and get it to the other side of the pitch. But UCD really are just closing in. Lovely and that's skill, great lovely skill stick coming work through into here the circle. Into it goes circle. the reverse flick over the bar again. They are getting closer, UCD. Yeah, I mean, so many other forwards have a really good reverse stick shot. We um, very much felt that before Christmas um, when we lost to them. I think there were a couple then in from the reverse, but. So far today, they've gone over the bar, um, which will be a relief to see. But they're really starting to, to fire on all cylinders in that circle, UCD. So Harlequins need to try and step out here and defend outside the circle. Because um, the danger really is when they get in there. A bit of a miss hit there. And that will be relief again for Belfast Harlequins. The longer it stays nil-nil, the harder it's going to be for UCD, who uh, really would have expected a comfortable three points here. They beat this opposition, as you said earlier, Jenny, by nine goals to nil back in the earlier part of the season in Belfield. Sent into the circle again. Great defence by Harlequins. That's great. And when, when, when Harlequins can get out this right-hand side, they're really um, finding some space from the attack. There's a good run from Claire Bannerman forward. So we're getting, they're getting a little bit of space and they'll be relieved to have it up the other end of the pitch for a second. Yep, they're... Uh, Really giving UCD a, a run for their money here. Well into the uh, second quarter. Belfast Harlequins will be delighted if they can keep it scoreless for as long as they can, but maybe they can even find a way of making a few chances for themselves. UCD maybe with a chance to break here. Harlequins had a lot of players forward. Great pace from the UCD player. That's well Nicely held up. back. Well held up it's by good Harlequins. Hockey. And now they're just... Lovely crossfield ball, maybe a bit of space here. Oh, wonderful. Tackle that. 
So that's Katie Lormer. Katie was injured before Christmas. She's been away playing in America for quite a few years, but Katie makes such a difference to this Harlequin squad. And as you see, she picked that ball up and is very quickly at the other end of the pitch. So she, she's a class player and, and makes such a difference. So Harlequin's up the other end now, which is great. A bit more end-to-end -end stuff in this uh, second quarter. UCD keen to keep possession here, maybe get a bit of confidence getting their passing going. Yeah, you can see that lovely passing hockey is fantastic out that back there. And again, you, you said about the Dutch tactics. The Dutch like to get into these little triangles, you know, sort of five yards and just pass the ball around. And that was a lovely example there at the left at UCD. They're just connecting those passes and that nice hockey. But Hardequins have picked it up again. UCD just sitting back and seeing what they've got to offer. Out it goes off the UCD stick. Another possession to Harlequins. Very good play by them. So it really will is. Just, Harlequins will just want to shift this ball and keep moving the UCD team to see if they can then try and find some gaps in behind. So you can see they're just moving it and like at a really good pace around the back. Just try and see if they can break through. UCD have everyone back, so it's not easy trying to draw them out but uh, UCD are just waiting very crowded in the circle came off a stick there chance for UCD to break this time nice pass Gosh, lovely reverse stick that one that's and very calm collected oh, hockey that's very there good isn't play. That lovely back. play off the feet of the Harlequins player so a free hit to UCD you know, the UCD defenders played with such composure there just to constructively pass the ball out, and that's, you know, where they connect really well. So for those of you joining late, Loretto beating the railway team today by two goals to one, which keeps railway in seventh place. Loretto extending their lead at the top, at least until the end of this match. UCD know they have to win today if they're to keep the gap to two points ahead of the last series of matches next week and next week Loretto are away to Pembroke Wanderers who held UCD 2-2 on Thursday while UCD will be traveling north to play Pegasus. Both tough games so anything can happen at this end of the season so there's a, an interception again from UCD and a nice little run forward. Came off the uh, foot, I think, of the UCD player. So Harlequins get the possession back. Yes, so that's a nice ball in. And Kiri, as so when she gets the ball in that centre, is able to pivot out through those players. So Harlequins are finding a little bit more space in that centre now, rather than sending the ball wide, where the UCD team are really ready to pounce on them. Nice but play here. Good passing again by UCD in the middle. Just got away from them there, but they should be able to keep it in just but there harlequins quickly onto the loose ball yeah that's catherine smiley sent a nice pass to g1 and then they, they tried to open up the pitch there so nice constructive hockey but again ucd will have the ball and harlequins will just sit tight and let them play the ball and see, ask some questions of them how difficult is it when you've played a game on thursday in a, this race for the title you know with all that tension and uh, everybody trying so hard to get the win you draw 2-2 two, two, and then you have to go again two days later. How difficult is that? Yeah, that's a really good point. I mean, for this UCD team to have played that tough game on Thursday, there will be some heavy legs. Also, they've travelled up the road today. So, um, you know, uh, on paper, yes, you know, they, they beat us before, but actually there will be heavy legs. I don't think they have a full squad. They've travelled, you know, with 14. So, and you can see Harlequins are really using their substitutes. So they're sending fresh legs on all the time. So... Um, it, it's yeah, it's not a big amount of rest time, but I'm sure UCDL have been professional enough to do their recovery, and they'll be they'll have been prepared for this game physically. Past the halfway point of the second quarter, still scoreless here in Derrymore Park, and Harlequins maybe with a chance here, driven into the circle, but it didn't touch a stick on the way, so, yeah, so that, that shot from outside the circle won't count. 
Yeah, so that was Katie Larmer. Again, she's um, very, very effective in that centre. She's picking the ball up. Claire Bannerman scores quite a lot of goals from deflections. So she was there with her stick in the ground, but it just didn't quite connect. But there are definite chances here at the other end of the pitch. UCD have the lion's share of the, the possession, but Harlequins on the attack actually look like there, there may be something here. The danger is, um, you know, for UCD is the longer this game goes on without scoring, then that's when there's the tendency to, for players to start to become more individual and start to deviate from the gameplay and things. But at the minute, they're sticking to their game plan and, like, you know, they'll, they'll really be anxious to get that first goal. Nice turn in the centre. UCD with lots of players out wide. Well kept in. This is good, skillful hockey from UCD. And it's out off the stick of a Harlequins player. So UCD with the possession. Harlequins with everybody back, as you would expect. Just over six minutes to half time. We've heard the backboard rattled a couple of times, <laughs> but so far, no goals. We have. It feels like it's getting closer, but um, still, still no goals yet. But it's certainly been an exciting game. We, we can't complain from a spectator's point of view, I don't think. It's been really good hockey out there from both sides and, and lots of end-to-end -end stuff. Yeah, the game of hockey is so different nowadays with the quick freeze, uh, no offsides. It's a totally different game than it was many years ago. And I'm sure it's a, a much more enjoyable game to play off the feet of the Harlequins player. So uh, a free hit to UCD, which they'll get to take again. Yeah, so I think we'll probably see UCD try and shift the ball a little bit to try and move those Harlequins players because they're really defending in numbers here for the last five minutes. Do you sense this is a, a fast game of hockey or is it just m maybe what you would expect? Um, I think it was always going to be fast. I mean, that the nature of what you see do that you see the way they play. Um, they're passing hockey and they've great ball pace. Um, you know, it definitely is. There's there's good speed here, but I mean, EYHL, the league. There's so you know every single game is so fast paced. You know, you really can't afford to have um, a bad quarter, a bad five minutes because you will be punished. So. The pace is definitely good, and you see the on the attack again. Sophia so. Cole, it was who sent it forward into the circle. They go. Cross is dangerous, but great defending. It's a good play by Belfast Harlequins to get the free hit for the ball off the feet. So you can see, you see, they actually aren't going for corners here. They're going for goals, you know, and some of those um, tight positions around the back line, a lot of teams will try and win penalty corners, but they are getting players up in numbers. They're trying to connect and get those open play goals, which is what they managed last time. But um, they'll maybe be a little bit disappointed that there's only been one penalty corner um, so far in this half. But equally, Harlequins will be happy to have kept it to that because really in hockey, you should expect to score maybe one and three penalty corners. So, you know, it is a good tactic to try and try and win those corners when you're attacking with such numbers. Lucy Crow with the free hit. Sent forward by Sarah McCauley. Harlequins well set up defensively here. UCD struggling to get through the middle and that's a really good interception. Yeah, that was a nice interception again by Katie Lorimer in the middle. So she's she's looking dangerous in the ball. So it's unfortunate that that was just intercepted the other way. Um, you see they are setting up. They've got three. At the, it looks like they've three at the back and they're playing their, their other sort of defender a little bit in front. So they've loads of options to really pass that ball around. Do you think fitness might be 